Um, and uh, my, my brother in high school was a, a, quite a good football player. He was a quarterback. I came along and I played quarterback for a couple of years and, and we got a new, a new uh, football coach who had graduated from Washington State. <coughs> Remember his name was Floyd Terry. Great young man. And uh, he converted me to an end. And I, I played end uh, for him and also I went to, I graduated in 1939 and went to Placer Junior College, which was located also in Auburn. I played two more years of football at, at Placer as um, in those days, of course, most of us played both ways. There weren't any defensive ends or offensive ends. You were an end, period. And, uh, <coughs> um, we had some pretty good football teams. We had an ex excellent basketball team. We had a great coach at high school. And um, um, I, I didn't play much basketball. Um, for some reason or other, I, basketball season came right after football season and, and it was difficult for me to, <coughs> to play basketball and, and, and be as gentle as the coach wanted me to and, and not be throwing blocks and elbows and knees into the opponents which I'd been taught to do in football. So I didn't get to play very much. I, I was usually fouled out of the game before the first quarter was over. And consequently, I was not a very good basketball player. Um, my brother and I both played baseball. And uh, my older sister, Nancy, who um, just last June, turned 100 years old. Um, she lives, she lives over in Concord, at a, at a care place called Coronado or Concord uh, Royale, and uh, she's still going quite strong at 100 years old. My, uh, my brother Bob died quite a few years ago at age 69 from injury, from complications from injuries that he received as a, as a pilot in the Army Air Corps uh, during World War II. And uh, I had a younger brother Keith, who was born in 1927, who missed World War II, <coughs> but uh, uh, came along the uh, Korean War. I, I was home shortly after it started, just for a few days, and I, I saw him, and I I told him I said, he had he had prospered running a gas station and he owned an airplane and he and he had a pilot's license and I said uh, you should go down and either join either the U.S. Air Force or the Navy as a, as a as a pilot you should be able to get into their their aviation program and and uh, avoid getting drafted. And then if you, if you, if you don't do that, I said, I, I guarantee you're going to be drafted and, and you'll find yourself over in Korea crawling around the mud with a rifle in your arms. And he 
says, oh, they, they won't draft me. And I said, why not? He said, <clears throat> both my eardrums have been punctured. And he says, they won't, they won't draft me. And I know oh, what, what happened to your ears. Well, I've got to mention, he, he was also a boxer. And he did a lot of golden gloves boxing and uh, was very good at it. He fought for the West Coast Championship in his weight class uh, when he was 17 years old. And anyway, uh, a couple of months later, he found himself over in Korea, crawling around the mud a, with a rifle in his arms. And he stayed over there a year and a half. He had his, he had his problems with authority. Uh, especially corporals and sergeants, and uh, but it wasn't too long before he was appointed corporal of his company and then sergeant, and uh, the, his company commander each time told him, "said I'm getting rid of that guy," and he said, "You're you're the new corporal or you're the new sergeant." So he stayed in Korea a year and a half, and he had worked his way up to be a first lieutenant. So he did pretty well. He had won two, or was awarded two uh, bronze stars for action. And well, I had a sister also, Marilyn, who was about a, uh, almost two years younger than I. Who she she was a very bright girl, as was my older sister, and both of them were straight A students in, all through school, and she uh, she went one year to Placer Junior College and was voted by the uh, faculty. The, to be the most outstanding student in her class. And so she went to San Francisco to um, um, can't think of the name of the hospital right now uh, and joined their school program to become a nurse. And she went upon graduating from uh, from nurses training, where she also stood number one in her class. Uh, she joined the Army, Army Nurse Corps. And uh, she never went overseas or anything. She was in at hospitals, um, mostly locally, uh, Army hospitals. And when the war ended, she was released from active duty and, and served as a nurse <coughs> for the rest of her life, along with uh, uh, time. She, she always wanted to be a teacher, too. So <coughs> she had an opportunity to go, go to UCLA, which she did, and graduated from UCLA as summa cum laude. And, <coughs> and, uh, she joined the, the school system in, in uh, El Dorado County for several years, uh, working both as a teacher and as a nurse. And, uh, and then later, when the government started the, the uh, um, Um, they call that program um, Head Start, Head Start program. <coughs> she was she was selected to to run the Head Start program up in Placer County, uh, which she did for several years. Unfortunately, she 
She met an untimely death at 79. She was shot in the back by her drunken husband who used a 12-gauge shotgun on her. And uh, fortunately for him he, and me, he died in prison of cancer. Um, I say fortunately for me because I, I was, maybe he was going to come up for parole in a year or two, and I had decided that <coughs> I was going to meet him at, at the main gate of the prison with my 357 in my hand, and I was going to end his prison term promptly. <coughs> fortunately, he died, fortunately for me anyway, because I probably wouldn't be in prison myself. But, um, let's see, my <coughs> I have one other sister, Sally, who lives in San Francisco. She had a career as, a, as a, an accountant and still lives. She's uh, 91 years old. You had six, there were six of you all together. Six of us all together, yes. Wow. <laughs> three boys, three girls. Oh, my younger brother, Keith, who was the first lieutenant in the Army, um, 